2 Samuel chapter 12, and we'll pick up verse 14. Howbeit because by this deed, adultery and murder, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blasphemy. That's the first time that word showed up. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto the house, unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bared unto David, and was very sick. Or in verse 18, it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. What a meaning God, people would say. How dare God kill that baby? The baby didn't do nothing. Primary looks like it's all upon David. Why does God kill the baby? It says God struck the child. The child became very sick and it died. Well, first of all, it says in the scriptures in this chapter that uh, verse number... Verse 9, Wherefore thou, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? For David says, Thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not commit adultery. Every man knows those two sins are wrong. You've got prisons built upon murderers. You know somewhere you got in your mind you're supposed to honor your parents. you got somewhere somebody said you're not supposed to steal. If you steal, the cops are going to come get you. They're going to put handcuffs on you. You're going to go to a judge and, you know, from there, supposed to be punished by the law. You know. So what is death of a baby? I can't answer that. Why did God strike this baby and not David or Bathsheba? I don't have the answer for that. But the answer is here. Verse 14. At the end of the verse. Shall surely die. That's the answer. That don't give me no answer. Genesis chapter 2, 217. Genesis 217. God said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, that's the first time Eden shows up. Thou shalt surely die. And that's the first time that die shows up. It's not God that kills the babies. And it's not God that wipes out a whole group of people with a, a monsoon or with a flood or with earthquake. It is because Adam and Eve disobeyed the word of God. It is because David disobeyed the word of God. And many, many, many years later, we open up the book of Romans 6, 13. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And my friend, we use it for evangelistic, which is great. But wages of sin is death is written for Christians. Just because I'm saved. Just because I'm washed in the blood of, of Jesus Christ. Just because I got the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. I am a child of God. I am still a sinner. And I will die. I talked to a guy who said he'll never sin. I mean, he never sinned. I'll see you at your death. The day you die will prove you're a sinner. We had another guy tell us, oh, I'll never die. The wages of sin is death. In one fashion. And I'm not going to give credit to shrinks. It's like, uh, but in one fashion, the, the common joke is my mama made me do it. My dad, my grandmother. Yes. In a way, that's true. We sin because of Adam and Eve, our great, 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 great grandparents. The question is, what are you going to do about it? That moment that David took that walk, whether he was supposed to be there or not, he should have been in war. But let's take the fact is, all right, he didn't go to war. He's walking on that roof. He sees that woman washing himself. What ought to have been the next instinct? I gotta go somewhere else. I gotta look somewhere else. Because David knows the scriptures, and he, everybody knows that David knows the scriptures. Joab says, Hey, listen, he's gonna start quoting the scriptures on you. He's gonna quote out the book of Judges. Even though they, you know, they know his book of Judges. 
And David, God says, listen, you've had all these wives. You've had all these blood. If you had that sexual desire of that woman over there, you had plenty of wives to say, honey, come here. Listen, I'm in the mood tonight. Which one of you will satisfy me? You see, that's, that's what he could have done. Now, why did God strike the baby? I don't know. I'm not holy and righteous. And they say, well, there are things where babies. I'm going to give you one of the few things where people say, but we don't know. God know what that child would have grown up to be. You, now, let's just take for instance here. It's terrible. But what if, for whatever reason, Adolf Hitler as a baby would have been killed dead? That would have changed history. Had it not. Yeah. And the thing is, we you come up to me, well, why did God, I can't answer that question, but sin. And I, some people say, well, at either judgment, I'm going to go up to God and I, I want to answer from God. And from my Baptist preacher friends and all that, I think God's going to answer you. I could be wrong. Why do you live to say? I mean, listen, if you had the death of a child or something like that, and you really want, God, why did you do that? What would be so wrong with God not telling you the reason? In a time that there is no more time, and we got all time because there is no time at the great white throne judgment. But it does happen. It is recorded in 2 Samuel 12 that the death of an innocent baby. And you can get angry with God. You can get mad at God. It happens. And David and Bathsheba move on with their life. Now, I've never had a death of a child. Now, I had a way of a form of a fetus. And that's life. But we never saw the child being born. And it's a tragic thing for a child to die in a family. But it happens. And it's not the time to blame God. It was very sick. To how surely die. It's sin. It's sin. David therefore besought God for the child. Now this is before the child died that Nathan says, listen, that child's going to die. David reaches out to God and not in anger. His attitude is not in anger. But he forgot what God said through Nathan, shall surely die. David's doing the same thing that Adam did. I didn't hear surely die. I didn't hear that. And we were talking about work last night drinking alcohol and many of them with their, I didn't hear my liver is going to get bad I didn't hear cirrhosis they didn't hear me talk about one of the things that the most painful thing you can get is pancreas pancreatitis outside of giving birth to a baby or having third degree burn they didn't hear that I didn't hear that and when a doctor pronounced to you that you've got this disease it's because you didn't hear that and now after the fact is you get angry with God and God has warned us 66 books. And our own heart and our own nature and our own conscience for us to say we ought not to be doing that. So it's not God. But it's amazing how God gets the credit for tragedy. Insurance policy, an act of God. And yet when a nation comes together and we fill our fat bellies at Thanksgiving, we don't give God the Thanksgiving no more. We see bumper stickers, without farms there's no food. No, what about God without God providing farms and farmers and food? So David besought God for the child. And David fasted. Didn't get angry, fasted. That means he left food. And went in and lay all night upon the earth. 
He's not laying on the bed. <coughs> David knows. <coughs> excuse me. David knows we're of dirt. We're made of dirt. I'm getting down to the closest thing I can get down to. Dirt. That's what I am. That's my flesh. God took dirt and made man. And that's where my child's going. That's where my son is going. He's going to the dirt if I don't intercede. And the elders of his house rose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. Get up, David. But he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day. That's, that's kind of weird because usually it's three days. And here's a remarkable statement. If that child was born in verse 15, 14, 15, 16. I don't even think it tells, if, if it's a male child, probably would be a male child. If he dies on the seventh day, he never made the circumcision. Child be circum a male child would be circumcised on the eighth day. On the seventh day that the child died. This is the first lamb. Write this down. Verse 6 of chapter 12. And he shall restore a lamb fourfold. Four lambs. This is lamb number one for David. And it happens within seven days. Of verse 6. Of his big mouth. Nathan comes in. This man he had he had a lamb. This other man he had a lamb. His lust came in. The, the traveler came and he stole the other man's lamb. Oh, that judgment! Four lambs for one lamb. Exodus twenty-two one. Okay, David, thou art the man. Here's your first lamb. We gotta be careful what we say. We gotta be careful. Here is a remember we mentioned sin hurts others. When Uriah was killed, other men were killed with Uriah in battle. David's sin has caused the death of an innocent child. That's another reason. It may be the sin of others that others suffer. I don't particularly like that one. Jeremiah's walking around. He's got uh, a wooden yoke about his neck. And he's picturing Israel. They're going to be under bondage. And this man steps up to Jeremiah, he breaks him off. <laughs> Look, God ain't going to do what Jeremiah is saying. God's going to protect us. And the Lord turns around as, as Jeremiah is walking away. He says, Jeremiah, stop. Turn around and tell them, you broke the, the wooden yoke. I'm going to give you a yoke of iron. And the nation of Israel went into iron because of one guy. And that guy died within, I think, three months. I don't understand that with God. And we got to realize not only death, we may be suffering because of someone else's being. God may be using us in our suffering and our troubles. Say, someone may be looking at us like, man, look how strong that person. I want to be like that person. I want to walk like that person. No matter what happens to that person, I want to do. That person is an encouragement to me by their pain and suffering. On the other hand, God may want you to suffer as Jeremiah suffered, as the prophets of the Bible suffered, and people did not listen, people did not obey. They put you in jail, they whipped you, they got rid of you, they even killed you. Pain and suffering and death is something that God uses, but it's man's casualty, it's man's doing. If Adam and Eve never ate that fruit, we would be in prosperity today. And there would be no graveyards. There would be no hospitals. And the seventh day the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was. Now right there their reaction is. They're telling you how upset David is. And I don't mean upset angry. His depression moved. We don't even want to tell him. If that guy is not eating now and he won't get off that ground right now, what is he going to do when we bring him the news that that baby has died? Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself? 
what is he going to do? What will he do to himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, that's the only place in the Bible that shows up. That's a good whisper, kind of way. There are bad whisperers. People talk behind people's back. It's a sin. They got respect for David. They're like, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David rose from the earth and washed. That's what started this whole mess. The Bible says Bathsheba was washing herself. Washing off the tears. He's washing off the dirt. And anointed himself. You know, put oil on their face. That's something they did over there with the sun. Cleaned up his face. Kind of like a cologne for a man. And changed his apparel. Changed his clothes. And came into the house of the Lord. That's a bunch of tents. Man, this is where this story started. David's looking at the house of the Lord saying, that's tents. I live in cedars. God, I got to do something for you. Man, David, I love your heart. I love everything you got for me. I'm going to build your house. God, wait a minute. I was thinking about your house, not my house. Wow, you're going to make my house so wonderful. So I'm going to walk on the house one day. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see a woman. Oh, look at the mess we're into. And it can go that quick, sin. He goes where God is. He's not angry with God. Into the house of the Lord and worship. That means he worshiped God. People, no one was loud in the house of the Lord but the priest. What's David doing walking in there? Uzziah went in there as a king and he ended up coming out with leprosy. Uzzah touches the ark of the Lord, and, he, and he's dead. They have an Abihu put, go in there with strange fire, and they're dead. John the Baptist's father sees Gabriel in the, in the holy place, and he starts freaking out. Because you don't belong here. David comes unto the house of the Lord and worship. Then he came into his own house. He went to God's house before he went to his house. And when he required... They set bread before him, and he did eat. All right, I'm hungry. Feed me. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child, while it was yet alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. Aren't you supposed to be mourning now? Your baby just died, Dave, and you're over here now having a feast. And watch these remarkable words. And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? Even though God said, surely he die. But David said, if I reach out to God in serious prayer, maybe God will repent. Jonah. Jonah. Chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3, verse 4. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey. He cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Nineveh, God told me he's going to judge you guys. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. And put on sackcloth, David changed his apparel, from the greatest of them even unto the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he rose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by a decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, church and state. But let man and beast be covered sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. 
Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way, and from the violence that's in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works that they that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. But Jonah was displeased. I mean, but it was displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying? When I was yet in my country, therefore I fled before unto Tarshish. For I know that thou art a gracious God. That's what David said. And merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. That's what David's seeking. Instead of getting angry at God, God, he's like, and let's see. Yes, David is before me. This, but they would never known Jonah. Like 200 years difference. But this is the God that David's seeking, Jonah's God. Of a bunch of heathen that Jonah hates, and he gets angry. I know God says shall surely die. But if he's gracious, and there may come times in your life that you're going to really get serious with God. And that's faith. It didn't happen, but there was faith. Hey, God will be gracious to me that the child may live. Didn't happen. But now he is dead. He. So it is a boy. He never did make circumcision. But he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Why? Bring me the food. Can I bring him back again? Well, God can. Resurrection. But David has no power. He's dead. I shall go to him. But he shall not return to me. Now, it's not saying David doesn't believe in the resurrection. But with David, there's no reason for that child to come back. He's dead. God's killed him. God told me. And bring on the food, because what's the sense of, of fasting anymore? It's happened. It's done. Now, he's not going to have a feast. He's not going to make merry, but he's hungry. And it could be possibly seven days he's been without food. There's nothing else I can do. He didn't go to a seance woman like Saul did. That baby's not coming back as a zombie. But look at David. He says, that baby, I will go to him. Abraham's bosom. That baby's in Abraham's bosom. And that baby will be reunited with David one day before Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That baby had no sin. Blessed him that David will say later on, that the Lord will not impute sin. That He was born in sin, but that baby had no idea what sin was. David has already been given the sure mercies of David. David, whatever you do, you're mine. That throne is mine. You are not going to hell. So when he says, I will go to that baby, he, I don't know if they knew about Abraham's bosom. But they had something with God in that promised land, the new earth. There's nothing else I can do. And it's sorry with death. And it, listen, I've had people die, and I miss my loved ones that die. You got to move on. How did David move on? And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her. And she bared a son. And called his name Solomon. Now how do we know that David is not mad at God? You ever hear Shalom? You ever hear of Jerusalem? 
Solomon, Salom, Salem of Jerusalem means peace. Solomon means peaceful. That's the name given him. David's at peace. And the Lord loved him. Solomon. Oh, let's drag on to David. The adultery and the murder. The adultery and the murder. The adultery and the murder. Adultery. That baby they had. Wow, I love that child. I'm going to make that child be able to take the throne and build my city. Build my, build my uh, throne. Build my temple. And he's going to say about Psalm that will. As a matter of fact, he's already said, "I will be as I will be his father, and he will be my son." Here he is, Solomon. Solomon has the same thing that God has given to Solomon as God's given to me. We're both child of God, and if I sin, God is going to chasten Solomon, and if I sin, God's going to chasten me as a father. Hebrews twelve. You say, "What well, about all the sins he did with his wives?" God said, "Hey, I chastened him." But he's mine. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet. And he called his name Jedidiah. Now at this point, verse 25, this is at the point that Solomon would have been circumcised. This would have been the eighth day. Like Jesus. When they brought him to the temple, they called his name Jesus. Jedidiah means beloved of the Lord. That's how much the Lord loved Solomon. That the prophet Nathan... The man that walked up to David said, Thou art the man. He said, I'm going to give your son another name, David. I don't care what you say. I've already overthrown your throne by God. Well, what are you going to name him? I'm going to name him Beloved of the Lord. Because God loves that boy. Then we move on. We move on with life. Now we go back into the picture we go back to Joab and the battlefield. We're going through 25 verses. Now we're going back to the battlefield. And Joab fought against Ribba. Let's go back to 11, 1. Chapter 11, verse 1. It came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him, with all Israel, and they destro destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Ribna. Now that read, but David tarried it still at Jerusalem. If that but David was tarried still at Jerusalem, if that was not there, we had gone from besieged Ribna to Joab fought against Ribna and the children of Ammon and took the royal. What we just read, if but David tarried it still at Jerusalem, verse 2, all the way to 25, well, 23. No, 25, because that she would be in the picture. That would not have been him. If David would have been where he was supposed to be. And great trouble you can get when you walk away from God. There's, there's a book called Pilgrim's Progress. Christians going along the path. And I forget, it's Dark Castle, The Giant Despair, I think it is. He goes off in the path. And he and his friend fall asleep in this in this giant's land. They weren't supposed to go off on the path. And the giant wakes him up and puts him in the in the dungeon and he beats him, he tortures him to near death. Why? Because Pilgrim went off the pathway. I read your King James Bible, study it, and read Pilgrim's Progress. When you're done reading your King James Bible, read it again. All the way through. When you're done reading Pilgrim's Progress, read it again. Two books I recommend. The King James Bible and Pilgrim's Progress. And Joab sent messengers to David. Boy, we didn't have the messengers about Uriah. And said, I have fought against Ribba. And have taken the cities of water. Oh, look at that. That's what the value of this city is. It's got water. Now therefore gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it. At least I take the city and it be called after my name. Look, look at the loyalty that Joe has to David. David, we're about to take the city and if I win, they're going to name this city after me. Uh-uh. David, get back to battle. That's what Joe has to say. 
You get your butt out here right now. Come on. This is where you belong. And David gathered all the people together and went to Ribna and fought against it and took it. And he took their king's crown from off his head. It weighed whereof uh, it, the weight whereof was a talent of gold with precious stones. And it was set on David's head. This is the first time for a Jewish king ever to mention a crown. And it's taken off an Ammonite people. And it's put on the head of David. Now, where's the difference between David and Jesus here? The Bible says Jesus comes back with many crowns. But look at the gold and precious stones. That's two of the rewards the Christian gets at the judgment seat of Christ. What about the silver? I have no idea. <laughs> and he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance, which is going to be used for the temple. And he brought forth people that, that were therein and put them under saws. First time that word shows up. And under how, how, how. First time that word shows up. Of iron. And under axes of iron. And made them pass through the brick kiln. First time that word shows up. Saws, harrows, and built kiln. The brick kiln. It's a furnace for bricks. And thus he did, thus did he unto all the cities of Jerusalem. So David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. He said, what is all that about? First Chronicles 20, verse 3. We'll be done. First Chronicles 20, verse 3. Scripture with scripture. Tell us exactly what David did. And to show the anger. Now these men were against God. These men were against the Jews. They were against God and his word. 20 verse 3. And he brought out the people that were, were in it. And cut them with souls. And with harrows of iron. And with axes. So David is torching these men to death. Because they're evil and wicked. He's getting rid of the people who do not want God. He's not putting them to work like some of the commentaries say. Cut them with the saws. They're vile. They got wicked ways. If you were to study their ways and their sexuality and their worship and their torture of other people. Listen, the king of the Babylon comes in. He grabs Zedekiah. He, he kills Zedekiah's sons right before Zedekiah. Then he pokes the eyeballs of Zedekiah out and puts them in prison. That's torture. That you got to sit in a darkened dungeon for the rest of your life and the last thing you saw was to see your sons being killed and probably tortured to death. And then only other people worse than that was the Amorites and the Ninevites that we read in the book of Jonah. They were fierce. And we can go into what they've done, but that's not the place or time. 